ました。Hi student, today I want to discuss about the question one for paper three SPM. So from here I will teach you how to answer it and also technique how to give the correct answer. So hope I can help you. Okay, let's see the first question. So what we highlight here there's an important notes. Okay, from here they say an experiment that's a carry out. Investigate. So important when you see the relationship, please highlight. Okay, there's a between two physical quantities. There's a height of the A in the tube. Another one should be the frequency of the sound wave. So from here, two physical quantity here. There's a H and also the F. So later, these two physical quantity we do the relationship. So that means now the experiments must doing the. Physical quantity related with the H and also the F, so either one will become manipulate variable, and another one should be the responding variable. So we continue to read the question. Then later we can find out which one should be manipulate variable. Okay, so from here the A pump is used to blow the A on the top of the tube, so that will produce the sound. So from here there's a water at the base. Then here the H is stand for the height. Of the A inside the tube. Okay, now the A pump. They will start to flow. Okay, pump the A pass through the surface of the tube. So from here they will produce the sound. Now the sound will transfer to the microphone, and the microphone they join with the cathode ray oscilloscope. So this one sound they detect by the microphone. After that, the pattern of the sound wave they will display on the CRO. So they shown as a diagram here. Okay, then we continue to the next one. Okay, so from here the pattern of the wave, the period of the wave generate there's a t, that can be calculate. Okay, this one is a important because they show you the calculation. So from here you need to follow because later you need to follow the uh, formula to calculate the answer. So from here the period equal d small d, okay zero point zero five, okay then the unit there's a second per cm, okay now they tell you what's a d. D is the length of the one wave in the cm. Okay now, the frequency of the wave can be calculated by this formula. So from here we know how to calculate the t. We also know how to calculate the f. Okay now diagram thirty. Five point two. They show about example illustration of the wave pattern from the CL screen. Okay, let's see the diagram. Okay, so attention. Here is the first diagram to show you the information. So make sure you know what how to measure first. Okay, so from here, okay, they show you this one is a D. D means one complete oscillation. So from here we see the in four, okay. The scale for the one square, okay. One square means one box. They equal to the one cm multiply one cm. So that means one box is represent one cm. So from this diagram, d equal four cm because they got four boxes to become one complete oscillation. So if you got four boxes, means four cm lor. Okay. Now how to measure the t? We follow the just now formula. Four, four is a d. Multiply zero point zero five. Then I get it zero point two zero s. Okay, second. Okay, so from here f. Okay, f is the frequency. So frequency we just follow the formula just now. So one over zero point two. You find the period just now. Okay, frequency is one over the period. So you get it five point zero. Hertz, okay. From this one diagram, we get the in four already. Okay, now the experiment is begin with the height of the A H thirty. So the first one they told you they using the H is how many. Then after that, the pattern of the wave produced from the CRO that we shown in the diagram thirty five point three. 
Now the experiment repeated. When you see this repeated, you also need to highlight. Okay, by using the different height. So from here, after repeated, you see the H. They keep repeated, give you the different number. 25, 20, 15, and 10. Sure, this one is a manipulate variable because they already is a fix. Okay, and also continue to repeat. So this one is a manipulate variable means another physical quantity just now i mentioned that one sure is a responding variable okay so this one is a tips how you find the manipulate variable how you find the responding variable from the question okay then we continue okay this one is the diagram show you the wave pattern then what you need to do you just read only okay this one experiment is already done so you need to find out what's the reading. Okay, now let's see this uh, information. Okay, we see the graph. This one is a one complete oscillation. Okay, now we're going to see 0 0.2 cm for one small box. Because one square stands for one cm, is it? So from here, we need to find out the smallest reading for the small boxes is how many. Okay, because one square box inside of five small uh, small boxes so one small box is represented by 0 0.2 cm okay agree yeah because of five 0 0.2 times five so become one cm so one boxes means one cm so we label one big box okay means one square box that's a one cm one small box okay the smallest one that's a 0 0.2 cm Okay, this one formula is just now I copy, then I put here. This one also same. Okay, now we go and see the first part. Okay, the first part they say the H 30 cm. Okay, they put the A is 30 cm. Now you need to measure the D. D means one complete oscillation. So we see here got how many square box. Okay, first number one full, number two. Then number three, and here is a half. Can you see there's a one, two, two and a half at the middle. So from here, we go to label first. One, two, three. So you already got three cm. Okay, so from here, we're going to find 0 0.2, 0 0.2. This one is a 0 0.1. So from here, two, two, then this one should be five. So your answer is 3.5 cm. Oh, sorry, I label first. Huh? So this one I show you 0 0.5 cm. So from here I can mention this one is 3.5 cm. Okay, now I need to measure, uh, I need to calculate the T. So T is a 3.5 multiply 0 0.05. Then I get the answer. So from here I get it is 0 0.175. Okay, some you ask, how many decimal point you want to put? Okay, suppose... Uh, up to you. You want to put 4 also can. You want to put at least it's a 2. If you put 2 decimal point, means everyone. You need to put 2 decimal point. Okay? So this one is the follow you. Okay, because just now the question already give 2 decimal points. So you also can follow the question, just 2 decimal point. Okay, so from here, if you put 2 decimal point, so everyone follow. Okay, if you put 3, another one also must be 3. Okay, now I'm going to find the F. F is a frequency, so that should be 1 over T. So my answer is a 5.71 hertz. Okay, so I need to show the another one. Okay, let's see the another one. This one also same. One complete oscillation. Okay, we're going to count the box first. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Okay, 3 after that got a little bit. This one is a 0 0.2 because they come out one small box. So here is a 0 0.2. So your D should be. 3.2 okay 3.2 cm after that we calculate the t same formula so i get it 0 0.160 so because the first one i give three decimal point so the second one i also need to give two that's are uh, three decimal point you cannot just say 0 0.16 if you put 0 0.16 this one you need to become 0 0.18 okay consistent then we find the f 6.25 hertz okay then we go to number three 
Number three, just one and two boxes is a full. Okay, then we're going to see which line. Okay, one, two, three, and number four. Number four should be 0 0.8. So we're going to check. Okay, 0 0.8. So this one should be 2.8. So uh, again, we apply the formula. 0 0.140. Then the frequency is 7.14. Okay, so this one just read only. Okay, then we continue for well, the H is a 15 cm. So 15 cm, we find it, the D becomes smaller and smaller. Okay, so that means when the height decreases, you find it, the H, uh, the D should be decreases also. Okay, so from here, we're going to measure 1 and 2. After that, this one is number 3. Boxes number 3. So this one should be 0 0.6. So from here, I can say about the D is a 0 0.6 plus 2. That's a 2.6. So the T and F, 0 0.130, 7.69. Okay, the last one, also 1, 2. After that, they go 1 and a half. So 1 and a half means 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So this one must be 0 0.3, 2.3 for D. T and F, follow the calculation. So I get it 0 0.115, 8.70. Okay, now we go to the next one. If we finish all the calculation here, then we go to answer the question. Okay, so from here they say manipulate variable. So the manipulate variable just now we find already there's a height of the A. Okay, in the tube. So we just answer height of the A in tube. Okay, number two, the responding variable. You see the responding variable from the uh, first the question to show you that should be the frequency of the sound wave okay the frequency from the sound wave that detect by using the CRO okay constant variable so many students they will miss out about constant variable constant variable actually we cannot using type type of the tube type of the CRO no another thing you also cannot use there's a size Size, we got so many things. You can say big size, you can say small size, you can say about big diameter, you can say thinner, you can say thicker, also can. So many things. So we cannot say about the size of the tube. Okay, you want to mention more specific. So from here, you can see the diagram. What situation there will change the frequency? First one, the height you cannot use already. Because height is a, a manipulated variable. So we're going to find another one. So from here, we find it. If the tube become bigger, that means you can put more A, they will affect the frequency. Is it? So from here, your constant variable is a diameter of the tube. So the diameter of the tube, you must fix. If you fix already, so that means the height, you can keep increasing. Okay? So the constant variable, you can get one mark. The rest also one mark. So from here, you get three marks. Okay? Then we continue to the next one. Okay, what we highlight means they're also important thing. Okay, from the old diagram just now, you need to determine the length of the wave, that's a D. The period of the wave, that's a T. For the corresponding height of the A in the H. In the tube, there's a H. So that means the four thing you need to find out. Just now we key in already. There's a D, T. Uh, after that, there's a H. Okay, so from here, we need to answer the question. For every value of the H, you need to calculate the frequency. So just now we calculate the frequency. Okay, so from here we need to conclude how many physical quantities we drop down already. First one sure is a H because the question provided. Okay, number two, we do the calculation for D. Then after that for T and the last one will be for F. So now they want you to tabulate the result. Tabulate means you need to draw the table form okay table form means the column and column okay you need how many column so you depend the question they say d t f for every h so that means that mention four alphabet here so that four alphabet means that is a physical quantities so we just drop down just now the uh, result in table form okay let's see here so this one is an example table form 
okay you mention what they want h d t and also f okay now we're going to see this table form how to get several marks okay now i need to explain how to get several marks from this table okay first one one mark you need to show h d t and f so every symbol you need to label then you can get one marks okay number two you need to state every symbol must have unit and also the unit you just follow the the diagram what they show you so we find it the h is a cm d also cm then t t is a period so there's a second after that we got f f is a hertz okay so from here we need to find out all the data just now what you fill in just transfer go in the table okay so that means if your measurement is wrong that means table later you also get the wrong answer lah. okay now after transfer we're going to see how to get marks number three okay one marks you need at least three value of the d correct okay this one is value for the d is it so that means they say at least you must three value at least three correct then you get one marks okay if you say you just two correct only so that means you cannot get any marks okay now if i say i all correct get d i all correct if you all correct means you can get two marks why you can get two marks because three value you also correct after that all value you also correct so that means you can get one another one okay for d only you can get two marks okay now we got four marks only now three more marks how to get it okay one mark for all the value t are correct all the value t you get correct answer okay then another one mark all the f your calculation all is correct okay then after that we go and see the last one the last one you need to state consistent decimal point okay that means everyone the decimal point must be consistent then you can get one marks how to compare d we compare by d t we compare with the t we cannot say t compare with d okay d is one decimal point then t also one no okay t if you put three decimal point all the t must three decimal point then the frequency also same if your frequency get two decimal point then all must two decimal point okay so if you apply the d example d you do the wrong thing you say 2.4 okay 2.4 the answer wrong already then this one should be wrong 2.4 then after that how about the t t you still can get the marks because you follow the calculation you follow the formula then you get the answer so that means because here wrong already then the answer will carry forward when it carry forwards then t should be correct so t correct means the f also must be correct because there's a carry forward okay okay now we see how to plot the graph okay important is the, the sentence on the graph paper plot a graph okay this one is a keyword okay when they mention the first physical quantities that one should be y axis okay later they mention that one should be the x axis so that means now the f must draw at the y axis then the h must be the x axis okay now we see from the graph how we can get the marks from the graph first one you need to draw the graph okay uh, sorry uh, not data we follow here because there's a f against the h so you have me to chain this one should be the f against the h okay so from here you can see a a you need to label the y axis so we label f okay another x so x axis i also label there's a h okay b so from here i will give you one of the tick eh? okay b 
you need to state the unit for every axis. So I label here is a hertz. Then I label this one is a cm. So I get another ticks. Okay. Now we go number three. Number three, both axes you need to draw. Or you say you can write your uniform skill. What means of the uniform skill? Okay, you need to start from zero. Okay, for the physics, must start from zero. Eh? Although your zero is no reading, you also must start from zero. Okay, then after that, the scale, is it uniform or not? One, two, three, four, five. So, every one different is a one. So, that's a uniform. Okay, let's see the bottom. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That one also consistent. So, if you say I start zero, then suddenly you start 10. Here 15. Uh, so, that means that not consistent. Because you here you start 10. Then after that you go 15. That means after you find the difference, that's not the same. So, you make sure the scale when you label must be consistent. Okay, another one is we normally using the even number. Okay, don't using the odd. Okay, the normal we use 1 and 1. Another one is 2. Okay, everyone is a 2 also can. Okay, 4 we seldom to use. Because 4 you need to do so many calculations for the decimal point. 3 sure cannot use. Because you find the answer is 3.3333 so many 3. You do not want to take which one decimal point. Okay, normally use is a 1, 2, 5 and 10. Uh, that one is more easier to do the calculation. Okay, now, D. We're going to check the D, eh? Okay, now I plot all the data through my table. So, you must refer your table. Although your table is wrong, your graph can get the marks. Because error carry forward. Okay, now we're going to see this part. D. Six point correct plot, uh, plotted. Okay, from here, we just got five only. So, maximum just got five only. Lah. So, from here, maximum five point. So, all your five point is correct to plot. You can get two ticks. Okay, if you wrong one, you just can get one ticks. Because they say at least three point is correct plot. Okay, at least it's a three. So, that means, so if you at least three, you get one tick. So, another you also all correct, then you get two ticks. So now if you all correct, you get one, two, three, four, five already. Five ticks already. Okay, now we go and check number six. Okay, number six, I go to plot the line already. Okay, you see when I plot the line, I never touch all the point. You no need to touch all the point because this one not perfect experiment. So from here when I plot, I find it, I cannot touch number 2. It's okay. You cannot touch, it's okay. So we're going to see how to get uh, the following marks. Okay, you see F. You can plot a smooth best fit line. Okay, best straight line. Okay, normally the physics is a straight line. They don't have any curve, don't have any zigzag. Okay, now we're going to see what means of the best fit. Best fit means balance. So now I draw the line. Can you see I touch all, but I leave one more. So this one I call balance because I leave one more. I cannot get an, another one already. If let's say I touch uh, 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 three only. I touch three, that means I left two, is it? When I left two, that means I make it balanced. If you two also below the line, that means there's an unbalance. Okay? Must one bottom, another one at the top. So we call it balance. Okay? So this one we call best fit. Okay, example, if you just can touch two. Okay, that means you leave three. Three, how to become balance? Because three, well, you cannot divide, right? So if three, that means either two up, one down. Or two down, one up. We also call it as a balance. Okay? And your point must be closer with the line. If you find one of the points far away at 5 here, means that point sure got problem. If like this, that means I also will minus your best fit marks. Okay, you cannot get the F already. Okay, the last one should be the G. Minimum size of the graph. Minimum must be 5 multiply 4. 5 means one big box. 1 
big box stand for 1 cm. So here is a 5 cm multiplied 4 cm. Okay, y axis you get 5 boxes. Uh, sorry, x axis you get 5 boxes. Then y axis you get 4 boxes. So this one we call it as a minimum size. Okay, so from here I go to measure this one. Okay, I start from here. Okay. So I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, I already got 6 boxes. Okay, now horizontal, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, 8 times 7. That one is already maximum. So it means normally you can get the max for G. Okay, because the reading at least got 5 readings already. So it must be enough. Okay, one graph paper, you must use it as a full. Don't cut it as a half, okay? Okay, then you normally draw the graph in the center of the graph paper. Okay, now we're going to see how to count the marks. Okay, if you get seven ticks, mean you get full marks. That's a five. Okay, six to five, you get four marks. Three to four, you get three marks. Two, one, then you get two and also one. So this one is how you get the marks from the graph. They only find marks. Okay. Although you got seven ticks. Okay. This one is an example what I draw. Okay. I check first. A and B. So A and B means uh, the unit and also symbol is it. So the first one I label the F. After that I got Hertz. Hertz is a unit. So both I also label. H, then this one is a CM. Okay, now we're going to see. C is a uniform scale. I start from 0. Okay, let's check the scale. 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8. Means every difference is a 2 CM. Okay, uh, sorry, it's a 2 Hertz. Okay, bottom, I start from 0. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that means every difference is a 5 uh, CM. So this one we call it uniform. Okay, now we go to uh, the following D and E. D and E is point all correct. All the point I label here follow the table. I'm correct. So you get D and E. If you just only okay three or four correct. Okay, from the five three or four. That means you at least three correct. You just can get one ticks only. That's an E. Okay, after E, we're going to see the line, best fit line. Okay, the straight line. Okay, let's see the graph here. I plot. I can touch number one. Number two, I cannot touch. Three, four, I touch. Number five, I cannot touch. So that means now I draw the straight line. Okay, can you see I left two? Okay, one is at the bottom. Another one is above. So this one, we call it balance. Okay, and also... The point I cannot touch, there's a closer with the line. Okay, normally we count 0 0.5 cm. If you're over 0 0.5 cm far away, that means that point will never count. If you never count, that means you cannot get F already. Okay, point must be balanced. Last one is a minimum size. So just now I told you, 5 multiplied with the 4 square. So you can get the marks for G. Okay, let's see here. 1 for the A. Okay, 2 for the B. Okay, 3 is for the uniform scale. This one. Okay, 4 and 5 is for the point. Okay, 6 for the line. Okay, 7 for the size. So the marks is 7, 5 marks. 6 to 5 ticks, 4 marks. 3 to 4, 3 marks. So 2 and 1. So that means from the graph, if you never plot, at least you can get 3 marks. Because you go to label, symbol and unit. After that, you draw the uniform scale. Okay, you can get 3 marks already. So the rest is depends your how you draw the line. Okay, so this one is how to get the marks. Okay, from the graph I draw it. Okay, what you think about the relationship? Can you see when the H okay, keep increasing? 
Okay, after that, my frequency is dropped. Okay, 30, they become uh, uh, 5 point something. Okay, then after that, 10, they get it is an 8 point something. Means that means the number of the H, the A increasing. So I find it the frequency will drop. So this one citation, okay, can you see the graph? We call it decrease linearly. Okay, if the question asks you what's the relationship, you cannot say when the H increase, F decrease. No, this one not the answer. If paper 2, okay. But paper 3, no. Because you already got graph. So you need to mention the terms. What's the term? Term is a directly proportional, inversely proportional, increase linearly, or decrease linearly. So from this one graph, there's a decrease linearly. Okay, so let's see the next question. Based on your graph, state the relationship between the F and also H. So from here, I get it. F decreases linearly with the H. So this one is a paper 3, question number 1. Okay, how many marks for this question? There's a total 16 marks. So hopefully, my explanation here can help you to score the question 1 from the paper 3. So thank you for your watching.